Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, finally had a chance to really start to get back into it again. Um, right now I'm reviewing this 2020 BMW 330i. This is the newer generation. So I'm gonna cover the features, basically kind of cover inside what's been changed, what's updated. I'm gonna compare it to my M3, which is a 2016, but at least the change as far as the iDrive and the infotainment, that stuff has kind of been updated and I might do like comparisons inside the car. Uh, we'll go out and drive it. I'll let you know my thoughts and we'll get some performance testing done. Um, the color of this one is called Jet Black. Uh, interior is Black Sensitec. So it's a, uh, it's what they call an interior. It's a synthetic leather. Uh, this has the convenience package. So you have the full um, LEDs, the adaptive LEDs. They do corner. And this is the two liter turbocharged four cylinder. Uh, it's not the X drive, just rear wheel drive only. I think it's probably the best way to go. I mean, unless you live in a cold climate, which you might vary some snow. But uh, I was really surprised driving this car. I was expecting it to be not very quick, you know, especially coming from, I mean, I have an X5, that's a V8 twin turbo. I have an M3, which is a six cylinder, it's an inline six twin turbo. I mean, I, I was thinking like, okay, uh, you know, I got 330, but you know what? I'm not gonna complain. And I jumped on the highway this thing is is zippy I, I i would put it up there with the audi's two liter turbos as far as that low end torque and it's just like in and out of traffic is where you need it that that low end power is very punchy like i i like it uh, i think it'd be a fun little commuter car you know if you wanted something and you didn't want to go through the running mill civic had extra money to spend definitely i think it's a really good car to get we'll do a walk around i'll cover a little bit of the outside and we'll get started and it has BMW's active grill shutters. Notice that these grills are closed right now. They're not open. Basically, when the car needs more air, these gills actually open up to suck in more air on down you know the highway or if you're stopped. And they shut obviously for aerodynamics when, for example, if it doesn't need that much airflow, these are closed. good amount of trunk space I don't have any luggage to compare but um, I would say you got a decent amount of trunks room in here all right let's have a look at the key it's the updated key fob this is what they've been using in the x5 uh, 3 series has been using an older key until the newer generation I'm finally glad they switched this is I love this key it has a much better feel to it um, let's see press once lock unlock your trunk button press and hold should let the windows down and unfortunately unless you hit the car coded oh actually you know what you don't have the windows go up and press and lock button which is nice also it has smart key doing the key fob in the pocket I'm gonna roll them up that way I can do the key fob or I can press here Hold. All right, this one has the sports seats. I really love the seats. Hold she in place. Um, you have your thigh extender. I will let you know, um, if you're short, sit one of these for first. If you're if you're five one and below, maybe sit one of these. These seats may irritate you. Um, I know my fiance, she says that these, I don't know why, but she's these, these little extenders for the, the handle for the extender, she said it cuts into her leg. And I try to see if I can, maybe it's seat position. I try raising the height up and I see it hitting her leg. So um, just be mindful for that, but otherwise, uh, I think it's a comfortable seat. You do have your tilt and telescoping steering wheel. Uh, paddle shifters back here behind the wheel. Good amount of headroom. 
Um, I'm 5'8". Uh, good armrest. Let's go to the back seat. Back seat. I have a lot of room back here too. Um, I am behind my seat position. Like I said, I'm 5'8". Good amount of leg room. Got a cup holder here, cup holder in the middle, and my own climate control with along with two uh, USB ports, uh, rapid charging USB-C ports, I say, USB-C. A couple, you know, people put maps in their cars, people don't do that anymore, but a few people did. There's a little net, the whole, you know, things like that. Books, iPads. Um, headroom is slightly limited back here. I mean, it, it which I'm, I'm assuming why the center stops short, but I still got the, at least my headroom, obviously up, up here, seems a little closed off because of the sunroof. Um, good headrest amount. So, obviously if, if you use that center seat, since the car is rear wheel drive, there is a hump. All right, start this BMW up. Start button here. Put on the brake. So a lot of updated features in this 2020 BMW. I mean, I've seen oh, maybe here somebody I got distracted M4 cranking up. Um, you know, this is all touchscreen, but you also have your traditional iDrive. So you have your home screen, which we're on right now. You can change if you want the different home, or if you can look over different screens. So, for example, if I want to look over and see this, it has the traffic flow. You have your, uh, just like a little more trim tree. Here's the traffic flow. You can see incidents, and it shows you to where they are. Uh, I think that's helpful. While well, traveling, um, you can go over to the next screen, and you have more. You have news. You have weather. So. I want to go over and see the weather. Let's see if what information it'll give me. It's loading the app. We'll see what it looks like. So it tells me it's going to be really hot these next few days. Friday 104. Let's uh, see. You can have weather warning and things like that. But always press the home screen, takes you right back. Um, you have your communications area. BMW Assist, um, you your personalization menu, navigation. Now compared to my iDrive and my uh, 2014, actually even my 2016, this is really clear. This is clearer than what I had before. Um, it's just, I'm amazed just to, um, I mean, it looks like I had, you know, 1080p in my uh, navigation and this is more like 4K. In comparison, I mean, look at that, you can see the clouds and stuff. So I imagine at nighttime, I'm messing to see the stars. Um, you got your same information, your cell phone strength, Bluetooth. Um, and also, this is all touchscreen, too. So if I want to hit the home screen, I can do that. I can go directly. Um, I just choose not to touch the screen because I don't like fingerprints on it. Uh, but you can obviously go back. You can hit any one of these things. Tire brush monitor. Um, even tells me it recommends the, the tire size, which is interesting. So this is all your vehicle information, engine oil, and everything is much easier to use. It is easy to use, and so I'm sure this is like your driver profile, so you can choose your driver profiles uh, right off the bat here. Um, then of course you go into your climate. You can do the menu if you want to see a menu exactly what's going on. This brings you more information because you know you have your if you're in a home screen and you have your information, you have a little bit right here in the screen. They did away with that, you know, of course that screen, it goes across that little one that they've done for years. Um, this one's a little more updated. You have your temperature, passenger and driver temperature. This is your fan speed, your recirculation, you know, it's self-explanatory. But they, you don't see the sync button here. You don't see, you know, the recirculation, uh, like the auto recirculation, what if you want that? All of those features are gone 
So I found that going to the menu AC brings up these additional options. So here you got the air quality. Um, I changed it from just fresh air to automatic recirc, uh, recirculation. So obviously when the car sees different um, or smells different fumes, it can recirculate automatically. You got your heating and ventilation. Um, you can change the temperature of that. Let's see. So you remember before where your car had those red and blue wheels that were here, usually in the vents, so you usually had the one in the middle or in the side. Well, this is all done through here. Now, regardless of what this is set for, even if it's set for 72 degrees, this is just fine tuning adjustment. You know, if I want to blow just a little bit warmer, warmer air or cooler air out of these vents. Uh, if you have it in a neutral setting, it's just gonna blow whatever, you know, the temperature is trying to reach. But say like, you know, some people like cold air blowing their face or something like that. You can, or do people want cold air all the time, regardless if it's hot outside. They want to warm the car, but just had a cooler air. Well, you can then move this over and change the temperature of the airflow. Um, you go down here and you can change the level. Uh, basically the, the strength of the climate control. Um, this is just how aggressive it's going to be when it reaches your desired temperature. Um, you know, obviously if you have it on a strong setting, it's going to, you know, it's going to really try to reach that temperature quickly, be really aggressive as far as like, you know, like for example, on the hot day, it's going to blow out the, like the highest fan speed, assuming you're in automatic mode, you know, so you press auto, set your temperature, it'll automatically bring the, the control the fan speed and adjust from there. And that was just how you get uh, back in the car mode. So let's go back in the car. I'm oh, sorry, this is the menu that you see. So this is how you sync, because without that, say like someone just is something on their side and you, you gotta resync it. This is just an easy way to bring it back. And climate control rules. You can choose where you want the seat heating to be automatic. Say for example, below 50 degrees, or you can set, you can adjust your threshold accordingly. So when you start your car in the morning, you will have to turn on the heated seat. It's already there. Or if you, you know, it's just easy way to set it. Um, right now it's an off. So, you know, and then of course you can then go up from there. And you can set your temperature. Pre-ventilation. I mean, if you're familiar with BMWs, they've all used this. This is just their simple way of, um, you can set it to vent the car. You know, say like I get off work at like, you know, 5.30 or something. I can have the car start ventilating at five to bring in some fresh air. So get rid of this hot air that's been stagnant inside of the vehicle. All right, so we're out of there. Um, this is just a couple of different things. Your turn signal, you know, if you want the three time flash. So if you want to hit it here, you want to do three blinks before it turns off, you can leave that on there. Um, and they turn lights, leave those on or off. Door handle lights, pathway lighting. You change your time. I think default is always 30 seconds, but of course you can activate that. If I believe the way you activate it is when you shut the car off, and so for example, I turn the car off, I'm shutting it all the way off, and I bring, I push on this car, usually on other cars, on the F chassis cars, you can just bring it towards you once, flash the high beam and it comes on. This one, you push it away from you once, you should see the headlight icon pop on, and the headlights will then be on for their preset time that you've set and the iDrive. Um, they will remain on, like I said, just 30 seconds. Punch up out of the car real quick. You should notice that the headlights are on. And they will remain on. And it's just a way, say for example, I live in, uh, if you live in an apartment or something, or you, you know, you want a way to light that pathway so you don't, you know, miss your step or it's raining, you'll make sure you're stepping on some water. All right. Coming in here, 
we can adjust our presets um, for the climate control. Say, for example, this I mean this could be for anything. This could be for my favorite navigation setting, or my favorite radio station, or it could be like my favorite screen here. If I just wanted to go automatically to home screen, and I want to be that this screen is what I want number three to be. Press and press hold to save. Hold down. Now this will take me right back to car mode and be right there. So no matter where I'm in, if I press three. I'll go to car mode that's the last setting I was in it's a quick way if I wanted that to be um, you can change anything uh, because I have the car selected I want it to be media I want it to be like my media press and hold all right so now that will always take me back to media so now pressing three will bring me back to my music collection um, it could be anything. It'd be my favorite navigation if I hit nav and I want number four to be like my nav screen at this zoom level. So if I want to zoom in and I say, all right, I want it to be like right there. Favorite setting. 800 feet. There you go. Perspective view, 800 feet. Obviously, there's different views in here. There's this perspective view. Um, you can choose what you like. choose the overhead this is like your traditional like map view that people are used to seeing I prefer the bird's eye perspective view okay moving in here cup holder will not accept my hydro flask unfortunately there is a wireless charging tray I think you had to buy the option I tried hard to see if I can get my phone to charge I don't know there's a button to activate it but my phone does not charge in here it doesn't work and there's not a button to act, turn it on all right there's a USB port here I have a 12 volt outlet down here um, have this you have your parts left there's a little bit different you go you press obviously go reverse Forward to reverse, all the way back to drive, click over for um, your drive sport mode. This is now this is can be for transmission sport. You have really aggressive shifts. Uh, if you touch the paddle shifter once, you will then you watch this change from S1 down to M2 or M1 when you're in manual mode. At this point, you have to use the paddle shifter to shift. If you accidentally do that from a mistake, just click over once and back over it again to your sport mode and you back in sport or you can just fit back and drive um, this is an additional method to get the sport mode for transmission in addition to sport so you can put this in sport but the transmission still is going to it's going to be a little bit aggressive but it's not going to be as sporty as putting it both in sport mode and since we're in the modes so let's go ahead and cover it you got sport mode changes the um, sport feel steering feeling um, throttle response is going to be differently and you're gonna have, you know, it's gonna hold the gears longer. The car's gonna, basically the turbo is gonna be a little bit more quicker to spool because it's gonna keep the car in its power band. Comfort mode, have that. And you have Eco Pro. And each time you change from these, the gauges layout changes. Um, Eco Pro, I'm assuming if it does, you, it should still coast. I think coasting mode is still there. I had to double check that. Um, I haven't driven this car in Eco Pro yet to double check it, but coasting is there. So when you're off the gas, I said there's a car staying in gear and it, what it does, it goes in neutral, automatically decouples the transmission and it coasts this for you, which is nice. Um, obviously you have your auto hold. This is just a way, for example, if I'm in drive, my foot's off the brake and the car doesn't creep away from me. Their brake lights are still on. The car is just holding its place. Um, if I wanted to resume and go, tap the gas once, and the car will roll away. If I come to stop, it will stop. And I reset brakes, it goes. You'll see the, the P when it says park, it means it's holding for you. If I go back and reverse again, 
and back up, it goes away. With park and a hold. Now, this is a way to, this is basically this feature is for, think of it like you're in a drive, drive, um, drive through, you know, you're trying to get some fast food because you've been working all day and you're too lazy to cook. Well, this is a way to where you're in a long line. If you don't want to hold the brake the whole time, put in auto hold, release the brake and just relax. Another way, um, another scenario, you're in traffic and the traffic stops and goes for a while. You just don't want to keep holding the brake every two seconds. That's another way. All right, hey, parking brake. This is a pull up once to and then press down with the foot brake on to release it. Let's see. Actually, you don't need to release it. Usually some cars you have to put the foot brake down. This one just so up once to hold it. And now release. And you, you'll hear the electronics, let this, the electro server, or whatever back there that's doing it. So we go over here to this screen. This is your cruise control. This is your speed limit. Say like, for example, remind me if I exceed over 75 miles an hour. You're just gonna get a warning sound. It's kind of a reminder because these cars drive so well, they're smooth you could easily exceed that speed. I know I will, and I know that's why I never set a limit because I do like the speed a little bit. Uh, this is your master cruise on. This is how you set your speed. So master switch first, set your speed, and you can adjust your speed. So if I would turn the master switch on, um, you set your speed, and then one, like little increments like this, will then um, increase your speed like by one. If you go past the detent, there's a little detent there, right there. If you go past the detent, it increments by five. You can also cancel the cruise. If you get somebody cuts you off, you can get a resume. There is an adaptive cruise control available if you want that. Um, works similar, except you're gonna have distance uh, markers to set how what you're following distance to be. Your headlight control, obviously you can turn it off. You can leave it in auto. You have your headlights on. You have your parking lights and they moved the roadside lights from the stock down to, um, to to these switches. If you're unfamiliar with the roadside parking lights, watch my video on hidden 20 things that you may not know about your BMW. Obviously this functionality is a little bit different, but I explain it better in that video. Um, I'd briefly talk about it as far as when they're to be used, what they're there for, and you know why would we use them, okay? trunk button, cup holder, tray. You have auto up and down on your front and rear windows, all four. Memory seats are now moved up here. The last the previous three series, they're down in the seat. Lock, and you have good, you know, solid feeling. I'll say this good, good feel uh, door lease. Power mirrors, power folding. All right, and then your hood release down here. It's two times. You pull it once, you can pull it twice before the hood will open, just in case you know you don't want to accidentally grab it. People keep their purse down here and you know, grab the hood by mistake, and they drive on the highway, and the hood flies up over their car, and it's a big mess. Have a horn. Let's see. Going to center console. have a fast charging USB port. See the lightning bolt that tells you, because different doesn't have lightning bolts, so that's just more of a trickle charge. When they, the fast charging is gonna have lightning bolt next to it. Glove box, damp, dampened, felt, lined. Um, materials in this car, this is, um, now this is a 330, doesn't have any, this has basically the convenience package, a lot of upgrades, but it doesn't feel cheap inside, it feels very, um, simple, if I could explain it, it's simple, no, nothing that could wear, um, you know, obviously no leather on the dashboard, just hard plastics. Um, the seats are the Sensitec, um, which, is, which is like a synthetic, it's a faux leather. Uh, feels durable enough. And of course you got, you know, sort of a upscale, like wood trim uh, for your center. Also, you have BMW. This is what was used to be on a 7 Series, but of course now you'll get this 
is BMW Assistant. And you can basically tell BMW what you want. Hi, BMW. From now on, you can address me with Hello, BMW. Hello, BMW. Hello, what can I help you with? I'm hot. All right, I'm decreasing the temperature by four degrees Fahrenheit. Hello, BMW. Hello, what can I help you with? I'm bored. I can't imagine that it's boring. Maybe you haven't had a chance yet to try out sport mode? <laughs> so, it's suggesting that I do sport mode. I'm bored. And it, she gave me the sport displays, um, the G meter. And of course, you have the sport displays. You get the G meter, you get the oil temperature, you get the torque, horsepower. And she put it right there. And so, that's all there. And of course, you have your BMW uh, apps, assistant. Just on that window. Now I'll be able to guest profile. Park mobile. I use that when I park a lot. Um, basically, you use your uh, phone. You can prepay the meter instead of just paying the meter. You have your the meter on your device, and it's easy to keep track of it. And you can reload it from your phone instead of bringing it back to your car when you're park parking the meters. And back seat has its own climate control as well as three zone. I have two fast charging USB. It's well a 12 volt outlet. And of course you can change different things or you can just go to auto mode. Uh, See, it's feeling comfortable back here. Have armrest is very similar to my last three series. And of course you have a trunk pass through. Through there. Up top, you have your reading lights. Surprised they put them, they didn't put them over here. They're here. I don't know if that, it's LED, so maybe easier to direct the light. Hopefully it's not distracting, but it falls right in my lap where it should be. As well as some ambient lighting too. I love BMW's ambient lighting. I mean, I feel like just, it's really sporty. I always loved it. Obviously, this button is your trash control. This is um, basically when you press it once, it allows a little bit of wheel slip, but doesn't allow it to really fully spin. Uh, pressing and holding, obviously, with this engage the whole traction system. Now everything's off, no, no assist. It's showing the car here, fish telling, let you know that this is what you're going to be dealing with. Um, park mode. Uh, a 360 camera is available. It doesn't have it. This is just a rear camera, but you get, park, you get parking sensors all around. If we had 360 camera, the, this would be moved over here and you'll see a car with a top down camera view. This is your review camera. Camera's really clear. You have guidance lines. with obstacle marking. Up top, reading light. There's like through your makeup. No sunglass holder, you have your BMW Connect. Another one. Um, reading lights. Have your main light, turns on all lights in the car with this. And then of course with this button. But with the shade closed, this is the shade. Press once to tilt. It ventilates the center, tilt sitting position. This gives you enough room to ventilate. Or you can just go all the way back with the shade. And it stays there. Or you can go back with the sunroof. 
and of course it deploys a windshade. Now this is a preset position where it stops. This is where BMW says this is where the um, so this is the furthest they're going to open. I'm sure that they could, if it opens anymore, you get more wind turbulence. And so I'll show you that trick with the popping the sunroof. But if you close it, it'll do the shade automatically for you. So we covered that. Rearview mirror. Everything button home link, and it looks like they did away with the um, the little clown nose that we used to see instead of these two lights. Steering wheel has a good feel. Wish it was a little bit thicker. It's okay. I'm being picky. I, I, wish, I like thick steering wheels. This is just my you know comparing it to my M3 and my M Sport X5. I just I have the wheels just a little bit fatter. You know through here. To media radio. Here's something that's different too. Say the halo. You can configure the way you want it. So blind spot, I remember Baron told you is you can turn it off, you can, but you can choose if you want it late, medium, or early. And it works above 50 miles an hour instead of 30 miles an hour. Obviously you have a light indicated here on the mirror, how, on that glass itself instead of the housing like you used to do. You have an departure warning. How close do you want it to get to the lines before it'll tell you your threshold? And then collision warning. And you can choose if you want steering intervention or not. Steering intervention means to be close to the line, it will just nudge you over just a little bit. Everything seems very explained on the screen. What's happening? What you're changing? Um, it's like every generation iDrive gets better. It keeps improving and makes it more user friendly. And of course, down here on your wipers, you have your off. Click up once to go to auto. Before it used to be a button you had to press for auto. Now you just put in that detent. I wish they kept the button. I wish they kept the button because. I don't know what position this is in. You can look at it and try to guess. But for me, it's like when I have a car, when it's positional, auto, it's easy to leave in that position and forget about it. Go to automatic car wash, you know, it's, it's the ones where you hand over your car to the, te the techs and the guy drives the, the car up on the rails on the conveyor belt and then he gets out of the car and then you realize your wipers are on auto. And you watch your car through the window drive through wipers are going and watch them get the wipers get sheared off very descriptive story ask me how i know about it i found that out the hard way i like i like the button because when you had the button it disengages each time that you turn the car off so, so you know you don't forget that it's on and i know people are saying well you can just turn the wipers off but yeah but when your wipers are on auto you typically don't touch them so if i'm driving in the rain hit some rain and then the wipers are doing this intermittent thing because now I'm in the mist and then they don't turn on for the rest of my drive. I'm driving for like an hour. The last 30 minutes, the wipers don't pop on anymore because I'm running out of rain. I may not even turn them back on. I may not even realize that they were, they were even on. And like I said, next day I might, oh, I need to wash my car. I need to run to the car wash. You know, the express wash. Sometimes you just run through the express. Um, I mean, I hand wash my car most of the time, but you don't know. Okay, here's the window sticker. It says jet black, black sense of tech interior. Has the convenience package, the comfort access, the lumbar support, LED headlights, active driving assistant, the blind spot detection, um, sport transmission. I mean, that's just the package. Everything else is included. 
Um, it's like five hundred dollars for set sports seats, maybe, or the heated seats. It's hard to tell where that thing is heated seats for five hundred dollars, and eleven hundred dollars for the live cockpit, which is what you see here on the screen. This whole this whole display being the screen. Um, I mean, total forty-five thousand dollars, six forty-five thousand six hundred ninety-five dollars. Um, they included refrigerant. Oh, I'm glad they did, because without that, I mean, that was very complimentary that they included refrigerant for your AC system. Because without that, you would just, I guess, they'll charge you extra if you wanted some cold AC. I mean, come on, BMW, <laughs> are you gonna put refrigerant in there as an included thing? Uh, here you go, features. If you guys want to look at that, if you want to pause, it's needed. The Hi-Fi sound system um, is better than the previous Hi-Fi's where they just didn't sound that great. I'm actually okay with it. I don't, you know, if I'm not a huge, I mean, I mean I'm a big audiophile, so of course I would want the Harman Kardon option. This sound system is still pretty good. Um, easy listening. Even, I don't have a problem with the sound system at all with this. All right, power comes from a two liter turbocharged four cylinder. And this engine pumps out 255 horsepower and 290 feet, 295 pound feet of torque. Um, like I said, just driving this car around, even though it's 255, it feels closer to 300 horsepower. You know, it's just power is always there, even down low, you know, that low torque. And um, I don't feel like if you if you're not a power junkie like me, this would be more than enough for people just day to day use for just driving the car around. And obviously, if that's enough, you can go to the um, M340i. The 340 is going to be 385 horsepower, and it's going to have it's going to be 385, and I believe it's two no 369 pound feet of torque, but it's going to be from an inline six cylinder. Um, that's all I have to say about this engine. I think we should drive it. Man, this little thing is peppy. I, I like it. It's, it's strong. It, I say that, but it feels like 300 uh, horsepower. Probably do all the torque that it does. I mean, it, it shoves you in the back. It, is, it really does push you back the seat. And now it's in comfort mode. So I'm gonna try sport mode transmission. And then you see I'm in an S5. And so to sport. So now we're in sport sport. Most aggressive mode I could be in. And we'll take them on the highway. We'll see what happens. Okay, I feel like sport mode actually made the car sound a little more throaty, a little more vocal. Four banger, but it doesn't sound doesn't give that buzzy sound. as I think it's a little deeper than what I think I'm sure BMW did some tuning with the engine. Oh yeah, it's definitely more vocal than the sport when in sport mode. Let's see if I can get a chance to get out in the open. I doubt I will. These two cars in front of me. You got a minivan, Mercedes with their sunshade up brake light out. We'll see. Figures.
curb, got around a Mercedes, and of course he sped up, and I, I just held, held it down, you know, the throttle to the floor, and I went around him. So just showing that how good the car just handles, and it held the gear. It's only held the throttle until I got straight. I'm not sure if that was the DSC activating or not. Got a little short burst, speed. I'm gonna try and see what it did. but actually it's a hard limit I could drive the car normally but it appears as though I cannot exceed the limit that I've set myself the throttle is electronically controlled so right now it's at 73 miles an hour opening right here and accelerate Accelerate, but I'm cruising. Park on one second. Set a little lower limit, 55. So yeah, it will not let me speed over. I, mean, I press the gas, it won't let me go. But there's a car coming on the highway. So I accelerated hard, and it still it led me to break my own limit just to accelerate on the highway so a safety thing it won't let you put yourself in a situation where you cannot pick up speed because like I said I drove back there I just had it set for 55 miles an hour I was trying to accelerate on the highway I realized I had my limit set and I was going to take it off but I floored it and it immediately disabled my limit just temporarily and it's going to keep me up here until I drop below 55 Like, look how sharp this car turns. Like, it, I mean, it, it's almost it turns it on dime. 
So here I'm on the road. I'm not gonna go to the edge. I'm just gonna make a turn. Let's see. Do you even have to 